Now, there's something else, too, which is important in the incorporation of a sediment into the rock record, and that's the change from sediment to rock. Consider, for example, this conglomerate and this breccia. Both formed of fragments, and the conglomerate, the fragments are round, and the breccia, they're angular, formed of loose fragments like this. And this sandstone formed of sand. How does that loose sediment become converted into rock? This is a sample of a natural sandy sediment. And let's see what happens to that sediment when we put it in a hydraulic press and apply about 15 tons of pressure to it. That's about 40,000 pounds per square inch. The pressure released. and the sample extracted. Clearly, the pressure has helped to bind together the sand of the sediment. But it hasn't done it very well. We clearly haven't been able to make rock out of that sand. What else do we need to do? What else is there in a natural rock that we didn't reproduce in the experiment? Let's have a look at a sandstone cutting a thin section of it, and see what else might have helped make the sand into a rock. The slice of sandstone is cut and polished and attached to a glass slide. And then further polishing grinds the rock down until it's about a thousandth of an inch thick. After a protective cover glass is mounted, then we can examine that thin section under the microscope. Polarized light helps reveal the different kinds of particles of which the rock is made. We can see that there are several different kinds of sand grains but there's also some material between the sand grains that seems to be holding them all together. And the question, of course, is how did it get there? This irrigation pipe on a Nevada ranch, in fact, helps supply that answer. Over the years, water has deposited a white crust on the pipe, calcium carbonate, which fizzes when acid is dropped on it. This rock does the same thing. Clearly, there is also calcium carbonate in this sandstone. Could calcium carbonate have been deposited between the sand grains in the rock, just as it was on the pipe? This substance, a chemical solution between the grains, demonstrates what might have happened. The solution is slowly crystallizing between the sand grains and cementing them together. This is very similar to the way in which the grains of sand in the sandstone might have been cemented together by calcium carbonate. So the factors which are important in consolidating or lithifying, turning into rock from a sediment, are the squeezing of the detrital grains, squeezing out the water, and also the crystallization of a cement between the grains. Making a rock out of an accumulation of sand or gravel is rather like making concrete. Now there's a second great group of sedimentary rocks that we haven't yet begun to look at, and they are the limestones.
Limestones are prominent as white, steep cliffs in the Grand Canyon, in contrast to the gentler reddish slopes of the sandstones and the shales. The uppermost limestone is Permian, and the lower one in the canyon is Mississippian. In Ontario, limestone is also prominent, particularly as the Niagara Escarpment, over which the Niagara River tumbles. And this limestone is Silurian in age, and its continuation forms Manitoulin Island. This limestone is very flat-lying, but in contrast, in the Rocky Mountains, their limestones have been folded and bent and broken during the processes of mountain building. Here they form the steep, rugged mountains of the Lake Minnewanka area. These limestones are Ordovician and Silurian in age. Along coasts, limestones are commonly uh, eroded into caves. The solution of the limestone uh, and it's being carried away by the seawater forms the, the caves. But caves can also be formed by the solution of water that fell as rainwater and traveled through cracks in the, the rock. And most caves are still forming because of this passage of groundwater through them. The most famous caves in North America are probably the Carlsbad Caves in New Mexico and those in Kentucky, the Great Mammoth Cave, for example. In Europe, the best cave area is probably in Yugoslavia, where there are also thick deposits of limestone. Caves are beautiful because of the stalagmites and stalactites, and it's this attraction which draws speleologists or cavers to their explorations. These are all limestones, usually light colored because the mineral that they're composed of is calcium carbonate. Many of them contain fossil fragments, and what they all have in common is that they're precipitates. That is to say that the material that forms the limestones was once in solution in the water in which the limestone originated. The calcium carbonate came from the solution of calcium and carbonate in rocks which were broken down on a land surface. And the calcium carbonate was carried to the sea in which the limestones originated by rivers. Now the process of precipitation through which limestones originate is quite nicely demonstrated in the growth of stalagmites and stalactites with which you're probably familiar. Water containing calcium carbonate in solution drips down through cracks in the roof of a cave and then drops to the floor of the cave. And while on the floor of the cave and while hanging as drops on the roof of the cave, some of the water evaporates and limestone is deposited as stalactites and stalagmites. Most limestones, however, are not formed in that way. Stalagmites and stalactites are rather exceptional kinds of limestones. Most limestones originate in seawater, and most of them are composed of uh, fragments of organisms, the skeletons of organisms, which lived in the seawater. For example, these corals marine organisms, the skeletons of which contribute to the formation of limestone. One area where limestone is originating today is in the Bahamas, and one can see the Bahamas very well from a satellite. The shallow, light-colored water of the lagoon stands out clearly from the air and is rimmed by the islands, which are themselves formed of ancient limestone. But it's in the lagoons that we find limestone being deposited at the present day. The sand of the Bahaman beaches is, in fact, a sand of limestone grains. And the floor of the lagoons is formed of lime mud, both capable of turning eventually into the rock limestone. Corals are prominent 
where the amount of money